This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 774, How to Come Out Way Ahead When Buying a Used Car, by Mr. Money Mustache of mrmoneymustache.com. And hi again, everybody. My name is Dan. I'm your host here, and a happy Valentine's Day if you are celebrating today. This episode is being brought to you by SendPro Online from Pitney Bowes. SendPro Online software makes it easy to save time and money no matter what you ship or mail. Print shipping labels and stamps right from your desk and access discounted rates. Try it free for 30 days and get a free 10-pound scale when you visit pb.com finance. That's pb.com finance. And now let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. How to Come Out Way Ahead When Buying a Used Car by Mr. Money Mustache of mrmoneymustache.com. A recent comment from a valued Mr. Money Mustache reader asks something like this, quote, I need a new car. We want a Honda CRV, but after looking at the used car listings, it looks like new might be a better deal, especially since it saves me from the need to put much money down, end quote. As a first note, no, don't do it. This question is perfect because it's exactly the same path many people go down when they end up with a new car. It's even more perfect because the CRV is the best-selling SUV in the country right now, so many people make the exact same decision. The car industry makes it very easy and convenient to buy a new car, and by comparison, it takes much more legwork to really score in the used car market. How exactly do you buy a used car without feeling like a sucker walking onto a used car lot and having the little fast-talking slickster start harassing you? What if you don't know much about used cars and how to take care of them? Here are the steps I recommend. As a lifetime car addict who drives inexpensive cars but secretly covets every Audi and Volkswagen and especially Tesla that comes off the line. I love cars so much that I can identify any model currently for sale in the US and give you all the stats on it just by seeing a picture of one of its headlights or taillights. Even though I rarely buy them, I love shopping for cars. Step one, figure out what really is the best car for your needs. You might start with a certain model in mind, Honda CRV in this case. Figure out what it is you like about this car. For the CRV, you probably like the large interior space, easy loading and unloading of kids, combined with general Honda quality. It won't break, it'll have good resale, it feels nice to drive. You can start by reading up on the CRV on a website such as MSN Autos or just doing Google searches for the model. There you will also find a list of competitors in that category. In this case, the category is small SUV, so the competitors are stuff like Jeep Liberty, Ford Escape, Toyota RAV4. As with most Hondas, the CRV is one of the best buys in this category. But in South Florida, do you really travel on a lot of extremely rocky and steep mountain roads or deep snow, or are most of the roads paved there? If so, maybe there is a way to keep the good attributes of a small SUV, like interior space, while shedding some of the bad ones, the high price, fuel economy rating of only 21 and 28 mpg, versus your Civic's 32 and 38 MPG. This fuel difference alone will leave the average person about $8,300 poorer after 10 years, and that's before factoring in bigger tires, larger amounts of oil, more expensive maintenance and insurance, etc. When it comes to interior space, three things matter most, rear seat legroom, headroom, and cargo space. Since your other car is a Nissan Frontier pickup truck, you've already got cargo space and traveling across wild beach areas covered. So you might also consider a 2009 Honda Fit, Scion XD, Nissan Versa, or Toyota Matrix. These are all tall, roomy passenger cars with awesome hatchback designs that can easily hold five people and stuff in the trunk. If you want even more space, you can click on a Yakima or Thule aerodynamic roof box for only the times you need it, like family camping road trips and such. If you commute a lot, consider a 2004 to 2009 Toyota Prius at 50 plus MPG, which also has a surprisingly large passenger and cargo area. Step two, figure out how much your car should cost used and how new a used car you need. If you drive a ton of miles, like 12,000 or more per year, you'll cover 120K miles in 10 years. That means you should get a fairly new car so you can squeeze those 120 out of it without having anything break. So buy one with less than 60K on it so far. On the other hand, I only drive 4,000 miles per year, so I only need 40,000 or so over the next 10 years. Because of this, I recently bought an older minivan for my construction business that already had 120,000 miles on it. After 10 years, I will still be at only 160K, well within the range of a Honda. As a result, my van only cost me $4,800, yet for my purposes, it's just as good as a new one worth over 30K. For our example, let's stick with the CRV. 
Because you deserve some luxury, let's get you one that still matches the newest generation of CRV. This generation came out in 2007, so I go to Edmunds.com and appraise the used value of a 2007 CRV mid level EX model. Looks like the private party sale value averages around 15,860 in the Fort Lauderdale area. Step three, search your local Craigslist for cars that match. So in this reader's case, we look at the South Florida Craigslist for a Honda CRV, specifying a price range of $10,000 to $16,000 and sort by price, which is very important since some used car sellers have a very vivid imagination when it comes to how high a price to ask for their used cars. You wanna pick out a meticulous sounding wealthy person who has babied their used car and done all the scheduled maintenance, yet is selling it cheap because they don't really need the money. Dealers are fine too, as long as they've been around a few years and have a clear file with the Better Business Bureau. Your best insurance is simply to get a car with the lowest mileage on the odometer. Looking quickly at Craigslist, I see some of the 2005 models out there actually have really low miles, like 49K, and are only about 10 grand. That's still a beautiful Honda, and compared to buying a new one at 30 grand with finance and taxes and including money compounding, it will save you more than $30,000 over 10 years just to get this used one with 49,000 miles. Keep your eye on this Craigslist search for a few weeks and call or email any of the ads that sound especially fair, honest, and detailed, like have good pictures, etc. Step four, go out and buy your new baby. When you're ready to make an offer, type the exact year and mileage of the target car into the Edmunds used car appraiser again and send the seller an honest offer explaining your reasoning. Do this before you even go to look at their car to keep yourself in the strongest bargaining position. Then if they accept, you go thoroughly look over and drive the car, and if it's as good as they say, you buy it. Regarding saving a cash cushion by buying a new car, don't do it. Any person over the age of 25 should definitely have a cash cushion large enough to live on for a few months and buy a used car. But you don't get a cushion like this by buying a new car on credit. That is financial suicide. Instead, think ahead 10 years when you will still have the used car you buy now and you'll have that extra $30,000 in the bank because of not buying the new CRV on credit. And on top of that, you'll have an extra $450,000 or more in the bank because of regularly reading the Mr. Money Mustache blog and applying more of his principles. You just listened to the post titled How to Come Out Way Ahead When Buying a Used Car by Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com. And once again, SendPro Online is an amazing online software that helps you save time and money no matter what you send. Letters, packages, overnights, or flats. And you'll always pay the right amount. It comes with a free 10-pound scale that weighs and calculates rates for you. Plus, you can compare options between USPS, UPS, and FedEx right at your fingertips. USPS postal rates went up last month and will increase again. But just by using SendPro Online, you get discounts of up to 40% off USPS priority mail shipping and you get five cents off every letter you send. No additional equipment is needed. Just log onto your computer and use your own printer to print shipping labels and stamps. SendPro Online is only $14.99 a month and listeners can get a free 30-day trial by visiting pb.com slash finance. Experience the convenience of SendPro Online and try it out for free at pb.com slash finance. And that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for listening today and I will be back with you tomorrow. That's where I'll have a post from PT Money. So have a happy Valentine's Day and I will see you back here for the Friday show where your optimal life awaits.